while hate crimes have become frequent in the United States and more commonly the targets are Muslims. That's in a country where Islam remains the fastest growing religion. So how do Muslims, especially those who made a conscious choice to convert, feeling nowadays with Islamophobia on the rise? In the third and final part of his Muslims in America series, RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky spent a day with a white American Muslim convert. To some, Islam is the root of all problems. Not all Muslims are terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslim. To many others who have a clue or read and understood the Quran, it's exactly the opposite. It is a peaceful religion, but uh, these other people have a whole political agenda and um, I don't understand it. It's horrifying. He, Something that uh, has been such a very positive in, in my life has, is now being uh, portrayed as uh, a, a training ground for uh, mindless uh, maniacs, really, who uh, don't care who they murder. Nevertheless, despite pundits and politicians alike continuously failing to see the difference between Islam and its radical offshoots, this religion is expanding at a fast pace. There's still no exact statistics as to how many Muslims are there in the United States. Some statistics say it's four million, some double that figure. What's undeniable is the rapid growth of Islam in the country. Only 10 years ago, there were only 50 Islamic schools across the nation. Now this number stands, stands at 200. The same applies to Islamic centers. This number has tripled over the last two decades. And to a certain extent, Islam can credit converts for its growth. But if this religion is evil, as some believe, why would people growing up in other environments want to join it? My attraction to Islam had to do with uh, just what I had learned about the, the scriptures. I, my curiosity increased and I started to investigate Islam. I, I found it to be uh, um, something that uh, I, I wanted to learn more about. We spent a day with a convert to find out. I, I pray here, I pray everywhere in the house. Robert Mago is what you would call a genuine white American. In fact, his family's presence in the United States dates back four centuries. So you have this, uh, you have this piece of art basically, a centerpiece in your, of your apartment, right? Well, it, Islam is the centerpiece in my life. Nevertheless, nine years ago, Robert made a life-changing decision. I was raised Christian and I always liked the idea of monotheism. When I learned about Islam and how it has a monotheistic focus, very similar to Judaism, but it has a place for Jesus as a respected prophet, it clicked. One of the more pleasant parts of being a Muslim to Robert is going to mosque prayers. It's here, he says, that the true nature of Islam is being revealed. Uh, they say in America the most segregated hour is Sunday in America uh, when people go to church, but here it's quite different. There are peoples from every corner of the world meeting each other, praying with each other, living their lives, marrying into each other's families. So it's massively different to what you experienced in the childhood going to a Catholic church? It, it definitely is a, a cultural shift. And are you enjoying this kind of shift? I, I very much enjoy it. I think that the, uh, the community presence, uh, the will to engage, the different stories we can tell, it just it, it makes a special communal experience. Robert's affinity towards Islam transformed into his professional life. This is the national office, uh, just several blocks from Capitol Hill. He now works for the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, providing legal help to Muslims in peril. Needless to say, with the rise of Islamophobia in the United States, Robert and his colleagues have been busy. Anti-Muslim rhetoric on the campaign trail is mainstreaming Islamophobia. And that's actually translating into acts of discrimination or hate crimes on the ground. An unidentified sender had mailed to our national office and our Bay Area office in California uh, a package with white powder. Thankfully, it was inert. We're constantly under threats, but we remain undeterred. I think that this only inspires us to work harder. We're a lightning rod that attracts this type of hate, but we understand that the, the whole community is under a similar threat. The notion you would often hear from Muslims in America these days, they acknowledge that thanks to those committing atrocities while associating themselves with Islam, the whole religion is being put into crosshairs. But just as their book, the Quran, teaches them, they're sure that adversity will eventually make way for the bright future. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Washington, D.C.